It's time for the news review segment. And before I introduce my guests, let me just remind you that the show is interactive. Use the hashtag Breakfast Daily across all social media platforms. We will see you, we will hear you, and we will bring your voice to the world. You can also send us a WhatsApp message. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know if you have comments on any of the things we're discussing. The number to use is 020-444-7033. 020-444-7033. And of course, if you're texting us from outside of Ghana, prefix the number with the country code plus 233. Now, the headlines we'll be looking at today, of course, the Akosombo Dam spillage. Then we'll look at attack on the media, especially on the back of the fact that yesterday, some human beings who invaded the UTV studios last week were fined. And we'll talk about that with my guests. And then the minority urges Kolebu to open the renal unit to outpatient. And those are conversations that have been going on as well. And again, we'll delve into them. It's time to introduce my guests, two gentlemen. They are not strangers to this show. Um, I have in the, what is this, the blue corner or the red corner? In the red corner, I mean, the blue corner. Yeah, yeah. Doing <laughs> <a> boxing ring. <laughs> we have Elvis Daku. He's the editor of the Finder newspaper and also newscenter.com. Mm. We also have in the orange corner or yellow, okay, yellow corner. Yeah, yellow, uh, corner the rest, the yellow corner. The yellow corner. As well as in Japan. <laughs> we have Mr. Larry Dogby. Mm. He's the editor of the Herald newspaper. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Okay, How are we well, doing? Yeah, fine, thank you. Uh, wonderful. Okay, I'm fine, thank you. Oh, you're fine. Hey, hey. I, I said we are fine. Uh, but I'm not sure if Elvis is fine. Yeah. Elvis, are you fine? Oh, by God's grace. Okay, okay. Once we are awake and, and <laughs> so, we are able so, to move from our houses to here, <laughs> we, are we fine. can say we are fine. <laughs> we are fine. So the first story I want us to get into is the dam spillage. Um, it's the biggest story, and it's not just a news story. It's a national disaster. And as of this morning, we're looking at 26,000 people having been displaced. Um, there have been several rescue efforts. The Ghana Navy is involved. Um, the Ghana National Fire Service is involved. Of course, NADMO is involved as well. So there's a lot going on. Yesterday, there was an interministerial committee that was with the president, the chief of staff as well and they went to the areas. And I, I'd like to believe that when they got there, they realized that it wasn't business as usual. You know? So several things have come out on the back of that. I'll read um, a few stories just to put everything into context. And I will begin um, with, uh, let's see. OK, let's talk about the tour. OK, so yesterday, Kufado um, was to tour the affected areas. The ministers who went with him, as we were informed, um, were, it was chaired, of course, by the chief of staff, Akusia Freema uh, Oseo Pari. Other members of the interministerial committee included the Minister of National Security, Albert Kandapa, Minister for the Interior, Ambrose Derry, Defense Minister, Dominic Nitsuwu, Energy Minister, um, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, the Finance Minister, Keno Foriata, and the Minister of Local Government, Daniel Kwekubuchi. And there were other members as well. Minister of Works and Housing, that's Asenso Boachi. Minister for Roads and Highways, Kwesi Amwakwata. Minister for Environment, Dr. Kweku Efriye. Minister for Sanitation, Fred Prem Frida Prempe. We had the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources as well, Samuel Jinapo. And the Minister for Information, Kojo Pong Nkrumah. And after this list came out, the Ghana Medical Association released a statement saying that the Minister for Health should be involved in the, you know, the, the relief efforts because, of course, medical professionals had come out to say that they perceived and they, they expected that this would result in a health crisis. I mean, and that is not rocket science, right? So you, you, waterborne diseases. Many latrines have been submerged. Fecal matter is getting into the water. Uh, you know, all sorts of things. So, gentlemen, what do you have to say about the matter at hand? Should I start with you? Okay. I mean, you've done, I, I, so, both of you, uh, several stories on this as well in uh, your respective uh, the, papers. I must say that, I see, this disaster, the magnitude is big. The magnitude is big. But if you look at the communities we are talking about, nine districts 
And we are talking about 26,000 people. That's the whole constituency yeah. when you look at the numbers that our constituency go into election. This is the whole constituency we are talking about that people have actually suffered. And for me, it doesn't bring the fall how unfair the country has been to the people of the Volta, Eastern, mm. and areas where the Volta River is today. What people don't know is that before the river, the dam was constructed, all the places you see the river were the fertile lands for the people of those regions where they had cocoa, coffee, and large farms just as you can find in Eastern or Ashanti region. That is how the Volta region has been. In fact, Volta has been the largest producer of coffee in Ghana. Yeah, for the longest time. Before the river. Mm. But the river came one night and they lost everything, everything they lost it because of the Akoso Modam. Mm. Nkrumah envisaged this and set up what they call a VRA resettlement fund. Mm. Plan of Nkrumah is that they need to, re the government has to rebuild all houses for every person affected by the river. They started in few communities, and then Kuma was overthrown. Since then, the people of Volta and all the uh, that place where <laughs> this river has taken were left to fend for themselves, and they've struggled. Even land to farm to feed is a problem. Well, all the land has been taken away by the river. So you go to Volta, and we are living on hills and mountains, mountains because yeah. all the valleys, which are the very fertile place for farming and anything for livelihood was gone mm. and it has affected these people now we are having 26,000 people what people are not even talking about is that their very livelihood has been taken away yeah. because these people are largely farmers and all their farmlands have been inundated mm. so you ask yourself that if all the farmlands have been inundated their um, uh, uh, food items that have stored at home are all gone how are these people going to survive until the next farming season mm. for them to be able to plant something in the event that the water even recedes and they are able to return to their homes? They are going to struggle to survive until the next planting season before even government says, I'll give you free uh, planting materials and rest to go and cultivate for one year before the farming season. Because the, uh, the minor farming season is almost ending. Mm -hmm. And, and the major farming season is going to start somewhere in March next year. So it means that from now to March next year, any food that the people are supposed to eat is going to be a major problem. That's and for me, for me, it's, we, shouldn't even, we shouldn't only run, help them within this short time, and the moment the water recedes and the people return to their home, then it's like government will leave them to their fate. If that happens, a lot of people will die out of hunger. They will struggle to be able to make any life. We are talking about the toilets and the roads and everything. The government said they put five million to try and fix the rules that if the water goes back, I think the roads will be fixed. But for me, our concern should be that, how are they going to feed until the next farming season comes? Mm -hmm. How are they going to restore their lives in terms of all that they've stored in their homes that have been washed away by the river? In fact, people's assets are all gone. So I, I see this as a very big disaster that government would need, if government really wants to support these people, government would need huge, in fact, millions of Ghana cities, maybe two, three hundred million Ghana cities. But we are talking about 26,000 people. Even if you decide to say you are supporting each person with 5,000 cities, multiply by 26,000 just for them to feed for the five months before the planting season. Mm -hmm. If the government also decides to support the planting materials when the farming season comes. So I think that we should be looking at it that whilst we have been able to put some of them at places where uh, uh, camps we are taking care of them for now, at least rice and things have been given to them too. If the water should recede tomorrow and the people can return to their homes, the, the, the government's action from that time for me is very, very important because most of the times in these cases, the very moment the water recedes and people return, that we think that the disaster is over and that we leave the people to their feet. Yeah. But I think that the most difficult period is when they are going to return to their homes. Mm. It's when their children have to return to school and they have to buy books mm. because all the books and everything their children have are gone. Is when they have to buy even uni uniform. Uh, uniform and dresses for their children because their shoes, everything is gone. 
So, so it's like you are starting life all over again as a person. So all your years of struggle and all that you've done for yourself, your TV is gone. Your fridge is gone. Your bed you are sleeping on is gone. And in fact, they've lost everything. So for me, I think that we should hear more from government about a more comprehensive plan. We, we should come to the understanding that these people, they are, back, they are at ground zero now. But so what proposal is government going to come out with to say, because they have come to ground zero, we are putting this package in place to at least help them at least get maybe 10 or 20 percent of what they have lost back so that we will know that there's a firm promise to be able to help these people what we are giving them right now they are just temporary and the government the water receipts if there is no plan in place the likelihood that they'll be left to take care of themselves will be will be there that's why i said that when kuma set up the voter resettlement fund immediately kuma was overthrown all the people who lost their homes and everything that the government planned to rebuild houses for them. The project ended. That settlement, for all that it has been doing since Nkrumah died, is that, oh, if some community needs a school, then they will try and come and build one school. If a community needs some a borehole, uh, no answer why they'll come and put a borehole. But that, the way Nkrumah and, and planned Nkuma it, that was... was Nkrumah was overthrown almost 60 years ago. Yes. So let's understand, you understand the it. time we've wasted. And, and, and you see the point. So all the, the houses that the government was to build for them have not been built. For most of the family, the houses have not been built for them. So they lost everything at that time. And we enjoyed the dam, the electricity, all the way to today. And the same people are now suffering. At least our grandfathers who died, who, the many of them are dead. But now their children and grandchildren have suffered a similar fate. And therefore, I think this time round, we should not repeat the mistake that we did when Nkrumah died and we abandoned them. We should see it as an opportunity that, that we, we, we have been unfair to these people for the first time. For the second time, we must do something to let them know the sacrifice they've made for us to have electricity. It's not in vain. Who was compensated for all the land that the river has taken? Today, government has acquired lands in Accra and other places compulsorily. The landowners have said, government, we think that you are not going to use the land for the purpose. And they are fighting to get part of the land. And some of the lands have been returned to the people. Nobody in the Volta or Eastern or places that the river can say, I want my land back so the, the water should go away. It's not going to happen to it won't happen tomorrow. Mm. So they've lost something forever. And if you read the Colotelli land, land in Africa is like the biggest asset you have because for many peasant farmers in rural areas the only asset they have that they rely on before they can build a life is land because it's on the land that they get their livelihood to be able to survive so for me all the talks about this and all that I think that the number we are talking about is 26,000 and we are told out of 26,000 as for 10,000, they have nowhere. They didn't even have any family to go to, mm. even in higher places. So now government has to camp them and be taking care of them. The meaning that the 16,000 for them, maybe they have families and relations in other places. So now they are beg, uh, patching with those people. Yeah. So as for them, they are not even getting the kind of uh, support that those who have been camped are getting. getting. So I think that this is an issue that we need to set up. If finance minister has to go to parliament for some emergency fund to be released by the Minister of Finance to make sure that these people get the support, we must do it. Because for me, the, the event has already happened. We have lost, the people have lost everything. The focus now should not be more about the event, mm -hmm. well, but should be about what are we going to do are we helping and, them? Uh, to, to do these mm -hmm. things. And we must, see, we must do these things very well. And make sure that we, we don't really get to a situation where we did in the past. I think that is very important. For me, my concern is about how this people's livelihood. They are alive. Mm. They can have some normalcy. At least if they get 20-30% of their life back, they will start from somewhere. But if we should leave them to their fate, ground zero, for them to start, it will be the greatest injustice we will do to our people. Wonderful. So I'm going to bring you in, Larry. Let me just point out, we are talking about... 26,000 people having been displaced. But I have the list of, I'm not going to go through the full list, but list of affected districts and communities, um, you know, the, across the Volta region, Greater Accra, Eastern as well. I mean, you have in Volta, North Tong, you have Central Tong as district, South Tong, 
Um, you have Shai or Sudoku in Greater Accra. You have a Sujama in Eastern. Um, you have Ada East in Greater Accra. When you put all these communities together, if we even go by census numbers from 2021, we're actually looking at about 3 million people. They may not have been all of them displaced, but livelihood affected. We've spoken about farming, but there are also those who are, who are doing fishing. You yeah. know, we've learned that a lot of the tilapia producers, all their cages Yeah, submerged, those who are wearing the tilapia you know, in the river. The catfish, all of that. So it's a very serious issue. Larry, let me come to you. I mean, what are your initial thoughts on this and um, what do you think about the whole situation? Well, uh, unbelievable, the point. I mean, Elvis has already thrown a lot of light on, uh, on, on, on the issue. And uh, I feel that, as I said, it's a very, one of the biggest catastrophes to have happened in this country. Mm. Now, uh, 26,000 is just what I'm sure has been recorded or documented. So far. So far. <laughs> okay, so we could end up having, you know, more than that. And it's obvious we're going to have more than that. Now, we've not been told about who, uh, how many lives have been lost. Thankfully, I mean, up until now, no death has been recorded. No, because people, yeah, people you know, up until people, now. Yeah, nobody's mm -hmm. entered the water yet, <laughs> you know, to know. It's when the water, you know, we see it before we will be able to know that, okay, uh, Auntie Ya, you know, can't be found. So so and so can't be found. That and that mm -hmm. can't be found. Then we will be able to also account for, you know, lives that have been lost. Apioko, uh, I see something. I think that Volta uh, VRA was ill prepared for this particular event. Mm -hmm. It is so obvious. Yesterday, I listened to one of the officials who said that, oh, you know something. We had done some uh, community engagement and then, you know, exactly sensitization, you know. And the first thing I noticed was where he said that they, uh, they, they dubbed the, is that it? Uh, uh, the exercise. The exercise yes. as, yes, yes. down hustle. Do you know that thing? Uh? <laughs> down, down hustle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are dealing with uh, votarians, mm. Tong people, yeah. who speak a particular language. Mm. So when you go there and you are telling them about the program that you are deploying, and it's called Down Hoso, mm. so they, they don't even understand the thing you are talking about. Mm. You get it? Yeah, I do. I do. And even the Sojama, they speak one. They don't exactly. even speak that. You get it. Yeah. yeah. So you can't tell me that you did down so and then you brought people from wherever to wherever and so on. Okay, but that is just that. I mean, apart from getting the, uh, the, that whole thing wrong by naming it the way you named it, for which was, many people wouldn't have understood it in the first place. Some of them may even decide I'm not participating because exactly. I feel insulted. You know, yes. that's how sensitive Let me tell you, I mean, a, a bit digression. Uh, Keta and then Aflawo in recent times, some of the community people have been complaining that most of the nurses or health professionals that are sent there are mostly tree-speaking people. And so I, have, I don't speak tree, and then I, I have a condition, and I'm talking to you, and you can't, I, I don't know how to communicate to you because I can't speak English yeah. either. And so then I'm talking to you about headache. You are treating me, you are treating something worse than that. Mm. Something different. Yeah. Something completely different. How would that person receive the kind of health care he or she needs? Mm. Okay. It's a similar thing that we are dealing with. The water kept coming. Yeah, all the water kept rising and so on. And you were watching. And because you claim you had done a, a certain... Simulation. Uh, yes, sure. Mm -hmm. So suddenly the people would know that... Oh, the what, I mean, how, how does this whole thing sit with us? How? 
And suddenly, you know, you, you, you started spilling the water and the people down there. Now you are having to tell us that, you know something, if you don't leave by a certain time, I mean, that whole thing could just break down. And then the whole, com you know, the whole community, even Tema is not safe. That's what they are telling us. No, it's not yeah, telling yeah. because... They said them breaks. Yeah, 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 yeah I mean, they are still spilling. Yeah, yeah. that one, more people will die. Yes, they're still people spilling. People will die. And they're spilling through only four out of the 12 spillage yeah. gates. Now, if the pressure increases, they'll have to open more valves. So what they are doing is actually trying to, even with all that we're experiencing now, they are trying to mitigate the pressure of the water. So there's a backflow. Yeah. Of course, water will find yeah. its way. Yeah. So Tama is at risk. Yeah. If we've reached Ada, yeah. we've reached Osudoku, all those areas, I'm getting to Ningo Pram yeah. Pram, yeah. Tama is next. So it, it's a very serious problem. It's, it's a very serious, serious problem. problem. Mm -hmm. and, and I think GNA, the GNA story, I think it's on my paper on page 10 on 11, and they talk about, they spoke to G, uh, Matthew, and Matthew said that's at September 4th. They had communicated to VRE, Ghana Health Service, and all relevant agencies that there is heavy rain in the Sahelian regions. Coming. And the north is also going to experience an abnormal rain this September. And therefore, the water that is going to come would be huge, according to the uh, Ghana Metro. It means that as of September 4, they issued a dispatch to these institutions that you're going to get more water than expected. So, so, so Elvis. But if you read the GRA point of view, they started spilling the water from September 15th. So the question between the 4th to the 15th, mm. wouldn't they have... That's the fourth of September. Uh -huh. yeah. Wouldn't they have started earlier so when they were That's about 11 days. Yeah, the dispatch from Matthew warning that North will have, and this is the white and black voter, which takes its source from the neighboring Sahelian countries. Sorry, so, so we're talking about the 4th of September yes. to the 15th of, exactly. of, so the of October. So 11. that's more than a month. Yeah, yeah, understand. No. So, no, no, it started spilling the water. From 15th. Is that 15th? But they were doing it little, little. 15th. But now, 15th of September. September. Okay, yeah. But then, when they got to October 12th, the water has risen to 276.69. Uh, uh, mm. Meanwhile, the, the highest should be 276. So it mm. actually exceeded. So at that point, it's about spill. If you don't spill a certain volume, the dam will break. The dam will break because the water is not coming. And I have so the an question we should be asking I have an update. As we speak, they're now spilling through eight of the spillage gates. Wow. So, so From four yesterday, yeah. we've moved to eight. So, so you realize that four. what happened between the 4th and the 15th, when GMET issued the warning to VRA and co, how come they didn't start the spilling quickly? These are some no, of the no, issues. No, but, so beyond, that but beyond the spilling, we, we should Elvis, be looking at. Elvis, beyond the spilling, did they announce, okay, that, hey, this is what is going to happen, that radio stations, TV stations like yours... Yeah, yeah, they other, sent a press other, release that from the 15th they, they were going to start spilling. They yeah. sent it. Yeah, they, they sent a press release, they which was published anyway. Okay, and, and, I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't see that. Yeah, I, 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 what, what, I published what, what date was that? I think the press you release check that. was, I think it's, it, it, it came at two or three, uh, I think 10 for something, they, issued, they said that, They'll start the spillage on the 15th. That's when they announced We it. can check that. that but start the spillage beyond that... You know, but for this, Abiyoko, yeah. but for this whole uh, thing about spillage and all that, you know, VRA was virtually... Off no, the off, system. Yeah, you don't system. hear anything about that. I, I don't want to use the word yeah. dead. Yeah, they, you don't hear... They were like a blackout in the media yes. space. Uh -huh. I don't want to use the word dead. But I mean, so here's, here's the thing. So... When we sent our reporters to the ground, and we still do have a number of you know, members of the team out there, different parts of the areas affected, they've spoken to the community members. And many of them did say they were informed. However, many of them were not informed or didn't get the information early. Hmm. So they got to maybe a day, two or days, two. and then yeah. before they realized. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I suspect they started this education based on the warning from GMET. So you realize that they have like only two weeks to do the education, and they have to move from 
community to community, and the communities are many. many. So, after they'll get so to some many. of the communities late. No. And it's interregional. Ah. No, but ah. you see, these days we have community radio stations and announcements and, and announcements stations and, all that. and so on and so forth. Political parties are even able to go yeah. down there and engage them. Do you understand? When they need the people's vote, they know how to reach them mm -hmm. and get a vote. I mean, when the people's health or their welfare is at stake, getting them the things that they are supposed to, you know, get there, get them, I mean, nobody really cares. Mm. You don't treat people like that. And instead of but see, the worst is... thing is what the president went saying. Of course. Mm. So <laughs> I'll, I'll let you take you it. You get it. I mean, <laughs> no, Mr. President. No. No. You don't treat people like that. These are people who are distressed. That's not the time. This is not the time to go talking about who voted, voted for, for you and who didn't. or who didn't vote for you. No. And even talking about votes at that at time. At this crucial time when lives are at stake. And then these are also people who already feel as though, and, and they are not wrong, they've had the brunt of everything wrong in this country, from the economic situations that we are facing to underdevelopment, and they feel that they've been slighted by the government. So when you come and you make statements like this at a time like this, then, I mean, it's, that you had come. it's insensitive. You had come and that, I mean, but for whatever it is, you wouldn't be there because if they didn't vote for you. Is it everybody who votes for you? Who will vote for you? In any case, you know what? The taxes that people in Chebi pay is the same quantum of tax or taxes that the vote, uh, people from the Volta region or somebody in Aflau pays or Mepe pays. So you don't go there telling them that, listen, I mean, I wouldn't have come here if, bad for, if, if it was because of votes. You, yeah. you get what I'm no, saying? Absolutely agree. But you see, this is not the first time. You remember when the tidal waves happened? The president refused to go there. I was in Ketu South. Ketu South, uh, Keta, mm -hmm. Anyangwing, and all me, other places. The president didn't step foot there. I mean, why, what, 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 what level of discrimination is this? Hmm. What yeah. level of discrimination is this? It's, 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 a, it's a difficult situation. You don't do that. You, it's, it, it was absolutely insensitive. I mean, the discrimination that happens anytime the president is in the Volta region, the way he talks, Apioko, I mean, somebody ought to prompt him that no, it, enough of it. You recall during the, uh, the Independence Day in Ho, he, I mean, I thought, I listened to his speech and then he went on and on and started talking about how, you know, started as usual, his uncle, his father, his so so and so, that and that had built Ghana before Transvolta Togoland came, meaning that before you before know, you were, we were. We were. <laughs> but you see, he distorted the history of Volta region completely. He distorted the history completely. You know, this is a man who's I'm holding back. Because, I can tell. Yeah. You see, he has a lot of votarians in his house. He has a lot of votarians in his home. And so you, you don't go. We, we've, we've come too far for you to still be engaging in this kind of politics. Mm. How many months more do you have to remain in office? Roughly, let's say, 14 months. You won the first election, you won the second one and other things, and you are level 14 months to, to leave office. And you are talking like this? You are talking like this, Mr. President. It is not on. Man, let's look at, see what is happening with the ministerial whatever. It's obviously a knee-jerk thing. So why would you have a disaster of this nature? Lives are at stake. You know, people who need health, uh, um, 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 I mean, even makeshift, uh, what you call it, clinics and so on and other things. But you set up a committee, a ministerial committee that doesn't have the Minister of Health in there. In the, what are we dealing with? It's obviously a government that is not prepared for anything. And so you go and be talking like that.
You don't do this. You don't. And people are trying to defend this. Well, the man goofed completely. You can't communicate with us. You can't let us know what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Use the WhatsApp number 020 444 7033. And again, if you're texting us from outside of Ghana, use the country code plus 233. You can also use the hashtag Breakfast Daily across all social media platforms. And we will see you. We will hear you. This is the news review segment. And I've been speaking with my guests. Um, you know, two gentlemen who are in the media space, and uh, I'm sure they'll be very passionate about our next topic. But before we move on, we've been speaking about the Akosombo Dam spillage and the havoc that it has wreaked. Matters are rising thereafter. Um, I'll, I'll come to you. Um, you know, Elvis, you were making some comments while we're on the break, as Larry was obviously very passionate, as he should be, about some of the comments that the president made, referencing who voted for who, didn't vote for who, when the, he and his interministerial committee went to visit the affected uh, areas Abiogo, yesterday. Why won't you read the, the exact words of the president? I don't have them here. I, 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 I can I, get I, the I, producer I, 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 I have it here. Yeah. 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 First, first, yeah, first of all, I want to say, yeah. say VRA needs to learn a lesson. Really? Okay. Really? The lesson they need At to least. learn is that the issue of press release, uh, uh, and for a press uh, uh, release, Elvis, Elvis. you can decide to cut you can no, really go no, and down. Let no, me no, no, this puts, no, no, it puts, it puts yeah. the whole they, they discussion to the release, proper The media context. will carry it or not, and they, they decide to give it what prominence or not. Of course. So I think one lesson they need to learn, that next time if they are going to do things like this, that they need to pay for advertorials mm. and announcements and other things in the media space. Because the issue press release, the media take the decision whether this press release is worth publishing or not. So they may, it may not get the, the kind of... That it means. And as we Larry as a look at his paper, he said he didn't even see the press release. Because it's true, this institution, as for me, I didn't even receive the press release. I had to pick it from GME. Mm. Because I'm not part of their mailing list. So they send it to their mailing list. You understand it? But if it is an, adver uh, an advertorial that they pay the very media house and say, do it for us because we think this is important. I think that the message would have been more spread than it was. So I think that one lesson they need to learn from this for me is, in case of these things, don't only issue a press release. At least spend some money to do some announcement and the rest to do it. I agree. See, what the president has said, it's in bad taste because so, the Elvis, people... So let, let me read it, since you're moving there. Akusumbo Dam Spillage... I shouldn't be here if it was about votes. So he goes on. I came here because Ghanaians are having difficulties. And it's my responsibility to try and help. Because if it's a question of counting who votes for me and who doesn't vote for me, I shouldn't be here. But that's not my concern. I mean, saying it's not my concern doesn't cancel out what yeah, you said. But that's not the full thing he said yeah. anyway. He said a lot before that. That's right. That is just two sentences from the, a, mm -hmm. a lot he said. See, so sometimes, that's a politician you must be careful of what you say. People will take a portion of what you have said and to represent you badly. I am saying that because it's a disaster, people are in pain and everything. See, politicians will always say that they think they are talking to their opponent anytime they are talking. <laughs> so they leave the people of Ghana out of their conversation. You see, anytime they want to say something, it's about what have my opponent said about me and how do I respond. Mm. This thing he said, it's a direct response to all the things that leading NDC members have said. Mm. Is it Jifa Gomashi is on Ghana web? Is it Akufuado is mute, but is quick to uh, 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 make statements about foreign disasters? Mm. And said that Akufuado like, he doesn't have. Oh, he said, oh, she said, oh, so did you read what Jifa Gomashi has said about the president? Mm. And uh, Clement Park, if you read what he has said, you understand it. So the politician in Akufuado say these people. They are trying to paint me bad before these people. Mm. So I must go and respond. What Akufado has said, if it's a normal political campaign season and he stands on a political campaign platform and says it, it will not be an issue. But it's because there is a disaster. People are in pain and they want encouragement. So if you go and make this statement thinking you are talking to your opponent, it's as if you are actually not talking to the people who you have gone to. It's, it's, the, it's like a response to the NDC, because you've heard and read all the things they've said, because you are out there, you are you were not in the people, you are not with the people. So they said a lot of things about it. So you are saying this before the victims, 
but the in, the impression I created is that you are telling the people, but your response is actually to the NDC. <laughs> but the question is why you are meeting the people? Why should you be saying things that is a response to criticism from others? And is it why you are president? Everybody has the right to criticize you. You are a public official. You are in charge of the whole country. Mm. So everything that happened, everybody can say, if the president has not done this, why? I think that politicians should learn a lesson. We have Ghanaians first before you have political party members. Absolutely. So if your opponent has said this about you, has made a lot of comments about you, your response should not necessarily be to that opponent. Mm. Know that whatever you are saying is not only to the opponent, but to the generality of Ghanaians. And it's not all Ghanaians who are members of NDC and NPP. So politicians should learn this thing so that when you are responding, in fact, if the NPP as a political party had held a press conference, cited what NDC leading members have said and make this comment, nobody will say anything. Mm. Because they'll say, well, they are responding to NDC people. But in the present speech, he didn't even mention anything about NDC. He didn't even talk about he was away and these are the things other people were saying about him for which reason he want to say this. He just said that it's straightforward. So it doesn't even sound like he's responding to those who are criticizing him. It sounded as if he's telling the very people he's talking to who are in pain because of this. So for me, the occasion he chose to say this and the condition and situation with the people are, it's really not the right place to make that comment. But as I said, if he had gone to a rally in any part of the vote, during really election period, and made this statement that they say I won't come here because you don't vote for me, but I'm here. That, 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 that. It will not be an issue because these are political statements. But in the case of disaster, when you are going to condole the people who have suffered these huge losses, making a statement like this really will be read in a different context because the situation at hand is not a politicization issue. Okay, and the same statement, see, the president also said that some people are trying to take advantage of this to claim political points mm. and actually caution against politicization. Mm. Is it in the same statement that you are cautioning against politicization? Yeah, you also made a political it. statement. <laughs> you, you understand it. Yeah. Whilst yeah. you are cautioning that this is a tragedy that should not be politicized, mm. the statement you have made also has become politics. Yeah. So there you see, you want to achieve one aim. But because it's at the back of your mind that you are responding to your opponent, you put in something, and it has defeated the purpose of you calling for people not to politicize the whole issue. Mm. So I've always said the politicians should understand. We have Ghanaians first, mm. before we have NDC and NPP. If your mindset is always about whatever that somebody says that's negative about me, it's because the person is my opponent. And you goof in a lot of things that you say because, interestingly, some of the things, even some of the people who will say these things, okay, may not even be politicians. Do you know this thing the president has said? has really created a lot of problems. You okay, know why? Because before the okay, president will so say this, Elvis. there were people who were looking for I opportunity to create this impression. It's okay? True. And then there was this uh, fake uh, post about one to me saying that the voters don't vote for MPP, so Elvis, they shouldn't want... call MPP. No, I just want to establish. Yeah. They shouldn't call MPP for any support. Yeah. Muntumi never spoke anywhere, never said anything like that. But there are people who are under that impression. They created that post and it was shared in social media widely. Even people abroad were sharing it to their... Co hey, is this what the NPP people are saying, which was false? So somebody even intended to achieve that, that, that purpose. But now uh, that uh, the president uh, has gone uh, to uh, make uh, this statement, say this? One, they will say, oh, ten ten then what they are saying would be this thing, even the president has gone because to we really need say to something. Yeah. 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 There's, 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 there's this authority on politics called Harold Laswell who says that, who defines politics as who gets what, when, and how. Oh, yeah. You get it. The people are suffering. Tell them about what you have for them. Okay? And that's it. Oh, I'm giving you, we are, the government has put in place this, that, 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 that. That is what the state is supposed to be doing. The state is supposed to be like a mother or a father for all and give resources out. Don't go saying that, oh, when I came to you for your support, you didn't give me your support, okay? And for, I mean, I, I shouldn't be having here in the first place. Mm. But because, you know, I'm a big man, I have a very big heart, so, you see, you said, that, if it that, is that, for I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So don't, 
<laughs> oh, but for that, you know, but for something, I came here, but for something. You don't do that. It's an insult. You won't do this elsewhere. I don't want to mention certain regions or certain towns and so on, okay? But treat the people with some modicum of respect. That is what we are talking about, okay? And listen, I, I said that President Akufado was a friend to, was like, you know, a junior brother to Kojo Chikata, who, mm. <laughs> you know, who, who, I mean, who was buried recently, okay? Jerry Rollins and so on, all that. He had been true and true, let's say, a friend of Votarians. You don't go there and be talking to the people like that. You won't do this in Chebi. You won't do this in Kumasi. You won't do this in Tamale. But it's become one too many of him. Okay? You don't do that. The people, tell them about what you have. People are stuck in classrooms. Mm. Kids can't go to school. Old uh, people have lost their medication. People have lost their livelihood. People have lost so many other things. Talk to them, to give them some degree of assurance. Then you are being a father. Then the people, your children can run to you. When you take that presidential oath, it puts on you so much responsibility mm -hmm. that you have to, you know, be very accommodating. I thought MPP's vote in the Volta region has been, you know, uh, uh, increasing over the years, particularly with him as the flag bearer of, uh, 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 of, of the party. Mm. And so you can't be talking like that. As I said, the taxes that you pay, okay, Volterians don't pay any, <laughs> any much less than what is paid for, you know, by, by the people, uh, the residents of Chebi, sure. okay? And you, so, oh man, share your love equally. This thing. Mm. Share your love equally. So we're moving on to our next story. But before then, let me just remind you about how you can support City TV, City FM. We are working together with the VRA, with NADMO, with all relevant authorities and stakeholders in a relief effort. And so we need, look, we need food for them, and the food should be canned or bagged things that are non-perishable and that can easily be shared to the victims of this disaster. We need water, sachet water, bottled water. We've mentioned that all the water bodies have been compromised. And so in, in order to prevent waterborne diseases from spreading and, you know, so many different things. They need water to drink. They need water to take care of their children, to bath, all sorts of things. We need detergent, detergent, washing powder, all the things that you would use to take care of yourself and keep your environment clean. We need those things. Uh, we also need um, toiletries, the toothpaste, the bathing soap. Those are important. Mattresses and blankets, especially for the shelters where these 10,000 plus people are being camped. We need those as well. And we need medical supplies. Many CHIPS compounds have been submerged. And so we are putting up makeshift, the authorities are putting up makeshift medical spaces and they need supplies to run them. So please, um, if you want to send anything via mobile money, 0550 is the number, or you can simply call 0205-973-973, 0205 973-973. Ask your questions. Perhaps you have other ideas on how you can help. We'll let you know what is feasible and what is not at this time. Now, gentlemen, Larry and Elvis. One, one, one yes. Moment. I, mean, I think that I would, I would have to commend uh, City, uh, the, uh, uh, you guys, for Thank whatever you. you've put in place, okay? Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's good. Thank you. It's good. It's good. You might, if you want to set up a medical team, mm -hmm. I mean, you could call retired doctors from whatever, nurses and all that. You could open your own, let's say, create your own makeshift clinics, okay. you know, sort of, that will be giving, you know, medical uh, consumables to people. People over there might be suffering from, you know, hypertension, yeah. diabetes, and other, you know, life-threatening conditions. Yeah. And so beyond uh, the toiletries and all other things and so on, Somebody, I mean, need something of a sort for the next day, mm. okay? And this is what, as a government, you know, one is expecting 
you know, something from, okay? That, oh, this amount of money has been put in place. Kids, of, kids you, we can move you from here to go to school in this particular community so that you wouldn't have to, let's say, lag behind right. as far as your education is concerned and all that. And you bring in Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, you do this. Uh, defense, you are doing this, mm. that, 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 that. Then one is, you know, living up to expectation. But Charlie, you guys, I mean, Thank kudos. You. Okay, Thank you keep so it up. Much. Thank you so much. And we'll be looking forward to see what other interventions are coming up. I do know that the Ghana Medical Association, in their statement yesterday, said they have deployed a lot of their people to the communities affected to also go and survey the situation, the and, public health and officials this is where stepping in and all that. An initiative under Mahama would be needed. There was this health buses we call Onuya bus. Yeah, they were supposed to be traveling to rural communities to offer health care. We have packed it as a country because we said the cost. In fact, we packed it under Mahama before I could for this one. We packed them because we said the cost of fueling and taking people around the country is too expensive. So they are packed at Kolebu. If you go there, the cars are there. Well, uh, what, what, what thoughts went into that? I, I don't know. The cars are packed there. And like, see if these cars were on the road. All of them would have just been deployed. There are about 10 of those cars. I think one for each region. But right now, the state in which the cars are, we can't use them. They're tires, everything. If you go to Kolebu, it's pathetic. But like, if these mobile hospital clinics it would were... Serve some of by now, they would have been deployed to these areas, as Larry is saying, and they would have been offering health care. Sure. So you see, some of these interventions, sometimes if we think about the future, it will be better. We went and bought these cars, fitted them with all the gadgets that are needed that when people move to rural areas, they can offer basic health care. Mm -hmm. so, and then we say because of fuel, so all this, we what can't I'll use it, we pack them. After we've done the immediate attempts to support these people, let's, we can go back to the drawing board and look at some of these things and see how we can deal with situations like this in the future.